Hello folks at home, welcome back to the channel. I am doing something a little different here today and I am sitting in my cave. Uh, I owe you guys an explanation from my Instagram where I have uh, stitches in my leg. So that's what we're gonna be explaining today and also answering some of your comments. Uh, and before we get to all the explaining, I would like to let all you fishing freaks know about the Guggenbaits Nuke Punch, now available, guggensquad.com. It just goes right into the fish's face. They slurp it like a little candy corn. Um, this is a very compact bait and we actually increased the durability of the plastic on this bait. This is something that you're gonna put on a flipping hook or a hammer hook or whatever kind of hook that you want really, but it's designed to go on a, on a flipping hook that you can um, you can flip into matted grass, heavy docks, heavy brush, can stand up to those hook sets and you can keep going with it. You know, Texas rig, and I've been putting it on the back of a jig lately and it's fantastic for that as well. It's, it's kind of like putting a bandito bug on the jig, which is my favorite jig trailer especially in the colder months or just clear water. And I don't have to like trim up my bandito bug anymore. I just, I just use this. Go check them out. Goodsquad.com. Bass will slurp it and you will love it as well. I just got back from Mexico, uh, fishing, starting off the year. Before I left, I had an accident, literally like right before. The next day I had meetings and then I had to get on a plane and go to Mexico uh, with this hole in my leg. I did happen to get this on camera and I'm gonna show you the guys that. But what I was doing, I was trying to make a video because I saw some comments on my, on my last uh, knife video about some of you wanted to see the sharpening process. So I was going to do sort of a, a, a basic overview uh, of how I sharpen my knives and I needed to get one that was kind of like dull or da really damaged uh, to show how to really sharpen the knife, like profile the blade itself. And I don't have any of those. I keep all my knives really honed and, and sharpened. Uh, and they're just all like, you know, dang near mirror polish finishes in there. So I was like, I need to get a knife that I don't really care that much about. And I need to go damage it uh, to show how to uh, sharpen it. So I grabbed one and uh, well, here you go. Check it out. Got some knots in here that might make this difficult to split. That's good. That's a good way to build it. Drop it on the ground. Pause for band-aids. <sighs> so as I walked off the scene there, uh, I turned off the camera. I went inside to go get a, a band-aid and some alcohol and kind of clean the wound. I, I knew that it went through my Duluth trading fire hose pants. So when, when it's going through the fire hose pants, you know it was is pretty good ding, uh, but I couldn't really see through the pants. I knew it was bleeding a little bit, um, and I had a little blood mark, but I was like, eh, I'll go upstairs and just patch it up, and I'll come back, and I'll uh, continue this video. And the next thing I know, I'm going upstairs. I'm getting a little, a little lightheaded, a little woozy. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I just walked upstairs. But that's a little more than usual. I see Stephanie, she's with the kids, and I'm like, hey honey, I need some help. Uh, had an accident outside. Um, can you give me some alcohol, some uh, some bandages and whatnot? And I went, we went into the bathroom, and I sit down on the john, and uh, this is not my best moment, y'all, but I'm just gonna tell you how I went down. Uh, 
I pulled my, my pant leg down so I could see the wound and address it and uh, saw, you know, there's a flap of, of meat uh, going on. And uh, then I started getting more woozy. And I was like, hey, Steph, I think I might pass out. Just letting you know, just giving you a heads up here, this could happen. And then the next thing I know, I'm waking up to uh, EMTs in the bathroom. So luckily, we live really close to a fire station and the EMTs got there really quick. Uh, I went out, I just, I blacked out. I've never blacked out before. And uh, it was very scary for Stephanie. Uh, she said I was convulsing and foaming at the mouth and all this stuff. And I woke up and I uh, completely wet my pants. It was, it was totally embarrassing. Uh, and I'm sharing this with the internet right now, which is, which is also embarrassing. Uh, but it was a scary moment, and I feel like I owe, owe you guys an explanation because I, I just all of a sudden went to New Mexico, and uh, you know I had this puncture wound in my leg. I just hadn't had time to really explain it, so uh, that's that's basically what happened uh, with my leg. I threw the knife at the stump. It it just ricocheted. That was a very stupid uh, act on my part that drop point, which is really like one of the only drop point knives I have, which is very pokey, just went, we just went right in there. Went in an inch and a half. So I'll show you guys the knife, you check this out. Um, went in there an inch and a half and you know, obviously there were dirt, debris and all that stuff. Um, and I, I, once I came to with the EMTs, I was, I was pretty much with it. Um, they, they checked it out and you know, they just said basically, I, I had a nerve. Um, it's just like, you know, getting knocked on the chin. It's like your body just says, it's time It's time for you to go to sleep so you don't bleed out. I woke up, you know, my uh, blood pressure was really low. It's just, it's just a defense mechanism for your body, basically. So, um, I, Stephanie drove me to the hospital and then uh, they were actually able to sew me up. That was kind of a process because the hospitals are like so full right now with other people. It was a long, it was just a long night, but I finally got stitched up and then, uh, yeah, I was in meetings all the next day and then went to Mexico. Um, so it's almost time to get the stitches out. I have a giant bruise on the back of my leg now. Um, I guess from, I don't know, just nerve endings or something from going in there, but thank God I was not by myself, like at, at the deer lease or something like that. I was just in the backyard and it literally from like one minute from when I turned the camera off to going upstairs, I was passing out. So it can happen quick. Moral of the story is, you know, don't throw knives at, um, at objects close to you. That's not a good idea. Um, and really be careful around sharp knives. Uh, I'm surprised it's taken this long for me to have, a, have an incident like that, I'm, but I'm usually really careful and, uh, I keep my knives so sharp that I have a lot of respect for, um, for my nice knives. I keep really sharp that one. I was just, I had never sharpened it. I was trying to dull it and, uh, yeah, it was factory sharp and it was still very pokey and it poked a, poked a nice hole in my leg. So I can officially go into the list of uh, self-inflicted stab wound victims uh, for my for my local county. That's that's good. Setting records over here. So that's what happened. And like I said, I went to Mexico. Uh, that's a whole another set of videos I'll be going at next. But right now I wanted to answer some of you guys' questions because I haven't done this in a very long time. Just uh, just had a video where I answered some some comments. So let's go through a few. Wow, I am reminded of why I don't always read comments right now. A little bit of shade being thrown. Okay, this is a very interesting question. So if someone asks, is my middle name Armistead? Very historical, they say. That's from Heavy Diesel. Yes, it is. Um, the Armistead name does have some historical significance. I know that there was a general Armistead uh, from the Civil War, and I believe there was a 
spy uh, for Washington. That's two uh, instances I've, I've heard that name. This is a good comment that I'm just reading from Ben Fennell. He's, he's digging the crappie videos. Um, and he said he's second. So I guess someone else also commented about this. Uh, doing some more crappie videos like from the bank or a dock or a kayak without the electronics. I, I like this and spring is a perfect time to do this. If you're, if you're getting into crappie fishing, um, the crappie will actually move up before the bass and spawn and you can catch them on throwing the cover and, and uh, it's, it's really fun. So I will definitely be doing uh, some videos like that without the electronics, um, you know, the live scoping and all that stuff. It, it's, it's a really easy way to catch them. And uh, yeah, I understand not everyone has live scope. So I will definitely be doing some of that this year. Uh, someone asked the last knife video, whatever happened to your gamma knife treatment? Uh, I'm having a meningioma removed next week and also uncertain on whether the entire thing will be removed. All right. I actually need to respond to this comment. This is important. So I had, uh, I had gamma knife, which is a radiation, a concentrated, uh, radiation procedure, uh, for my brain. So I have a certain part of my tumor in my brain that it just can't be operated on. It's, uh, it bumps up on my optic nerve and the carotid artery and anything around the carotid artery you cannot touch. So, uh, the surgeon that did my uh, brain surgeon, uh, he, that did it originally, he knew that he was going to leave that in there and this, and I would probably need to get a gamma knife. Uh, and I waited about a year and saw that there was just there was just a little bit of growth on the tumor so they went ahead and get and did the gamma knife since my last examination uh six months ago i haven't uh, i haven't had any growth on the tumor yet so that's great so i i think i'm scheduled to go down to like one scan a year now i got a ct scan when i after i busted open my leg with the knife um they, they did a ct scan because I did have some convulsions and some seizure like behavior. They just wanted to make sure my brain wasn't acting up again. So, uh, I, I got a CT scan and they said everything was, they saw my tumor in there, but said nothing looked crazy, which was a big relief. So that was nice. Um, but to answer your question, the, this person says that they have a meningioma. Um, what they do is they just take whatever they can out and then, uh, they do the gamma knife, you know, about a year later if they need to. So maybe you won't have to have it. Uh, someone asked what my fillet knife was in that last knife video. And that, that's a, um, it's not a fully custom fillet knife. I bought it at a store when I was up in Escanaba, not Bark River. It's actually a store called Rapid River Knives. And it has a like 30 degree angle blade on the back. Um, and then on the front of the blade, obviously it's got a, it's got a 20 degree, maybe be less than that. Um, but it's CPM 154 steel. And, uh, it's like, I forget what kind of maple it's like some sort of light colored maple handle. It's really nice. And, uh, I use it all the time. I love it. So you can actually buy them online from rapid river. Uh, some people are saying they want me to get back to fishing. I have. I have just gone five days deep into a lake I have never been to in Mexico, and it was good times. Uh, caught hundreds of bass. So bass action is about to be had. Um, I will just say though, I, th I think it's important to pass on uh, general outdoor information as a whole uh, on this channel. And you know, even after I, I am gone from YouTube, one day, um, I, that's, that's important to me to, to pass on some of these things that I think are important to be a, a total outdoorsman. Um, so hunting, fishing, obviously, uh, camping, you know, general, just outdoorsmanship, woodsmanship, and just anything I learn from great outdoorsmen, uh, I try to pass along. So, uh, I just think those are important skills to have that, you know, 
kind of dwindling these days. Joe B. Gallagher says maybe a backpacking trip with OSG or something would be cool to see. Man, we have talked about that so much and want to do it right now. We are just with the two little kiddos right now. It's tough. I love it. I know Stephanie would love it. And uh, so we definitely want to do do some of that. Take our take our big camper and and go to some of these places and then go in from there and do hiking. And uh, I'm hoping this fall that I'm going to be able to do some some just pack in fishing trips in Colorado and places like that. And I'll probably do some uh, some more backpack hunting this year. Everybody seems to love my dad. Uh, my dad is very loved. Uh, especially by me. So LFD will be making some um, some more appearances in 2022, of course. Um, I actually tried to get him to go to Mexico with me, but he was busy at the beginning of the year. Uh, if you guys want me to answer more comments, leave them in this video. Uh, I, I will start answering some comments maybe at the start of every video, just answering a couple and then getting into the juice uh, of the video. So um, anyway, I just wanted to share what happened to my leg and uh, kind of give you guys a look at it right now. Um, pretty much ready to go, ready to stand on a boat though. Um, did that, worked out great because in Mexico I could wear shorts, let this thing air out, get a little, you know, sunshine, some vitamin D ski. And uh, next trip, I believe I am going to Florida to uh, the Big O and, and get on some more bass. So just kicking off 22 with some good old bass dangling, y'all. Sniffed a bunch this week. So all that action coming up next. And go ahead and smash that like button for me just being alive I've survived a lot you know what I mean uh, two kids knives tumors uh, the occasional hater on YouTube nothing nothing can stop this absolute tenured man so thank you guys for being here uh, God bless you Godspeed in the great outdoors I'll see you soon